All right, for this flat iron tinning tech tip, we're back here again with the 2003 WH project car. And we're going to talk about ball joints and tie rod ends. Um, before we even get there, uh, basically what prompted all this is uh, to replace a bad wheel bearing. And as we got further and further in, we realized that basically almost everything on the front end suspension of this project car needed to be replaced because it was worn out. Um, and actually, I've been running the White Line Roll Center just kit way back since it first came out. So it's probably been about roughly eight years to this point. But one of the ball joint boots had a tear in it. There was some wear. So it was time to replace these anyway, um, among everything else in the car as well. I wanted to give a word of caution before we even dive into this, that um, this is a seemingly deceptively simple install. But if you have an older car, or if you live in a, in a place where you have a lot of, of rust and corrosion to the underside of your car, this can be an install that, that can absolutely uh, test you as a mechanic, and uh, it might send you back to the square jar more times than, than you want to admit. So, first and foremost, just wanted to let you know what you're in for. Um, I will tell you, that on, on the plus side, that Company 23 has come up with a tool that was very helpful for us, and hopefully would be helpful for you, and can help with one of the more frustrating aspects of this job, which is to get the ball joint out of the knuckle. So the ball joint is, is basically uh, pressed into the knuckle or held into the knuckle with a compression fitting, and then the castle nut comes down into the lower control arm. Um, both of these can be frustrating to get out or, or can fight you to get out. Um, if you could at least get the ball joint out of the lower control arm, but the ball joint is seized into the knuckle, there's not a whole lot here you can grab onto, and, and that can be really frustrating, and that's where the Company 23 tool comes in. What this does is it comes over the ball joint and threads into your, to your uh, ball joint itself and allows you to pop it out of that knuckle. So keep that in mind. Uh, you might want to make sure you got at least a friend that has something like this handy if you're going to undertake this, uh, because that can certainly be one of the more frustrating aspects of this whole, whole endeavor. So just want to give you that kind of public service announcement just as far as what you might be in for on an older car, and I will tell you that this one on both sides basically fought us at every turn. So it can be really frustrating. Um, so why would you even go down that road? Why would you deal with all that trouble? Well, the answer is if you have a car that is lowered about three quarters of an inch to an inch or more, the white line roll center adjust kit is extremely helpful um, in correcting your suspension geometry. Um, so, so basically what happens is as you lower the car, this lower control arm flattens out. And as it flattens out, what happens is that it, it has, it affects how, negatively affects how the knuckle moves as the suspension is compressed. Instead of getting a little bit of extra negative camber, it can actually at an extreme give you positive camber as the suspension is compressed. And that really has a negative impact on handling. So the white line roll center just kit, the, the special magic is just in this extra tall ball joint. Um, you know, there's just a little bit of extra height to it where it sits into the lower control arm. And what that does as you've lowered the car is it brings back some of that angle for the lower control arm that you've lost. So as, you're, as the car is sitting stationary, what you want to see is a down slope angle of those lower control arms, just like this, so that you know, it'll work properly. And that's what this brings back to you. And the white line has also designed a tie rod end to go along with this. Um, I can tell you from my personal experience when I first put these coilovers on years and years ago, um, that basically the steering felt really heavy, almost bound up, and quickly realized that it was because I had lowered the car you know, enough to the point where the suspension geometry and the steering rack geometry was not optimal. And putting this roll center just kit on basically fixed all of that. And so it was, it was a very noticeable difference at that time. And that's where you know any, any McPherson suspension, front, car, uh, front suspension car that you, 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 know, you have something like this available to, and you've lowered it, it's definitely something worth, worth looking at because it, simply put, just gets, gets the suspension geometry back to the way, or as close as possible to the way that the factory designed it, um, even with the lower ride height. So hopefully this lets you know a little bit of what you're in for and why you'd want to consider going through all that trouble just to put this on. Um, so thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please, uh, please drop a like. If we save you a trip to the square jar, please drop a like. And uh, stay tuned for more on the 2003 WX project car and for more flat range tuning tech tips.
How much do you like working on old cars? I love it. You get to hit things with hammers. Don't you have an old Mercedes? That I hit with hammers? Yes. There we go. Now, Daniel, I'm not familiar with that wrench. Can, which wrench is that? <laughs> this one? Yeah. This is the uh, the official tie rod removal wrench. That, that's a special it's, wrench. It's it's very special. Okay. <laughs> it is the best tool for old cars. <laughs>